All right, we are back. So let's go into our sunless skies. We still have a couple of areas of the map that I wanted to get to. We've gotten most of this first area explored, but we're still missing the port of Titania. Or so our passenger tells us. Chorister bees will always attack if you are carrying Chorister nectar. Well, I'm glad for that little lore tip game, because I never would have known that, and have not yet been attacked by Chorister bees. Alright. We've hired on the crew. I believe that we're just a little shy of the extra facet we need to get our cannery and extra hull space. We're just we're just a couple hundred off. All right. We've hired on the crew. We've visited all of these things. Munitions for the Lustrum Mine. Munitions for Port Prosper's Parsimonious Chairman. Do I have? I can see that my hold is mostly full, so I've got munitions carefully packed. My plan is to bring this to somebody. I guess to Lustrum. So off to Lustrum we'll go then. What do you guys want? Bronze wood. Okay. Close that out. Let's take a look at my dock. We need to go to Lustrum. Now, passing directly through means going through that awful place with all of the red ruins being terrible. So I guess we'll head up through Carillon first and circle round. Seems to be the better the better move here. Yep, I think that's gonna be the way. Okay, we've resupplied. Everything's good. Time to go. Oh, Sky Train game still kind of weird. Still kind of weird that they're trains. Could have been zeppelins. Could have been blimps. That could have been kind of cool. You know what we're missing? A hang glider game. You know, hang glider to hang glider combat. Could have been cool. Could have been great. Alright, now we have to not get hit by the Tackety Scouts, who are, per the usual, very intent on trying to murder us. They're drunk, they can't help themselves. And we'll move through. Now, so far, I have not made a strong enough impression on the Tackety's or the Stovepipes to garner enemies. Like, so far, nobody has been trying to hurt me about it. but we've definitely been giving our port reports almost exclusively to the Tackadies. The engine headlights glow like a ghost upon the icy mists. Yeah. It starts to become a bad scene very quickly. I don't want to fight crow women and scary red glowing ruins. Not after what they did to Captain Whitlock. I don't even think it was those ruins. It was something about the Blue Kingdom. They went through the Blue Kingdom transit. Which in my head is always going to be a wormhole because that makes a lot more sense to me than, you know, random sky transit. Leave me alone, Tackety Scout! I'm glad they don't shoot at me, but they sure try really hard to hit me all the damn time. Cautious driver grimaces, mother said illness is all in the mind, she'd fit right in here. Yeah, another thing worth noticing, my soul has a lot of stains on it. It's got stains, and it's clear, and it's fermented, and I don't know what any of those things mean, or if they have practical effect. Nobody's explained to me why having a tarnished soul is bad, so 
As far as I'm concerned, it just makes me less attractive to devils, and that's surely a good thing. Okay. Let's go ahead and enter the foyer and get our port report. Entering Carillon's foyer. Grey stone, the color of a monastery, attending devils and devilesses dressed in uniform, and an incoming parade of the sick, the friendless, the dying, and those who think their lives would be better if only they were something else. This is Carillon, where souls are refined into something more impressive. Yeah, sure, yeah, whatever. I'm gonna write a port report. The penitents come from all corners of the high wilderness. Someone will want to hear of their comings and goings. You take some notes on a pilgrim's journey through Carillon. The first port of call is the beehive-shaped office in the center, or, more accurately, the long queue leading into it. From there, the infernal attendants direct them to one of Carillon's seven gardens to undergo penances. They certainly look penitent by the time they emerge. Presumably, their souls are much improved, not that you can tell. I could investigate the propaganda, but we've done that previously, and it's, you know, it's fine. It's whatever, it's fine. Chorister Nectar here is going cheap. But I don't really need to buy Chorister Nectar. I don't have that as one of my things just now. We're good on supplies. We'll head back to the center. I'll travel around Carillon for just a second. I don't know that anything is going to be particularly helpful for me. I do have a stained soul, which gains me some admittance, I guess. Well, let's visit the sand garden, because that's, that's actually new for us. It descends into a tunnel. Carved out over the mouth of the tunnel are symbols of death. A skull, a flail, a fly on its back. Penance, endurance can be gained here. You need a clear soul to be admitted. The air is cold. The sand crunches underfoot. You either embrace danger, or you will not be deterred, or you are numb. I don't know that any of these are the right answer, or if there is one. Well, which is true then for Nurse Irwin? Probably that she will not be deterred. Not by fear, not by cold, not by hesitation or anxiety. You have chosen a way forward, that is all. In the pure blackness, you walk into a column of stone. No more than a column, a divide where the path goes left and right. You'll have to choose a way without reason. There is nothing here to determine which is best. Yeah, it doesn't look good. The devils call this pl place a garden in jest. It is barren sand, under the rest of Carillon, not served by any sunlight. The sand is coarse and itchy, the air dry and overhot. One feels hungry, thirsty, even a bit faint, just standing here. The penitents here are mostly fierce, burly types, some of them scarred. One or two look as though they are rightfully should be dead. Well, I don't tr like my luck to try for an actual penance, so I think it's just going to be approaching the penitent area. We'll see if there's anyone new to talk to. We're supposed to be investigating a thing here. But I just don't have any of the things necessary. Approach the penitent ape. What is it doing here? He has collected human souls, and now he is here to cultivate them. Well, let's at least pretend to assist him to see to have a better snoop. Assist a penitent ape. How did he even gain entry into the sand garden? Rather like the Pentecostal apes, right? Remember back in Sunless Sea, the Pentecostal apes cultivated human soul human souls, and that's how they gained their intelligence. Nonsensical chatter. He tells you in a low mutter the soul was a gambler, but a good one. Able to remember odds and figures, fast at seeing an opponent's bluff, took bets where he shouldn't, calculated the odds of a dying in a knife fight, and decided he didn't mind a 10% risk, if the pot was large enough. A good soul, but it would be better if one but it would be a better one if it could be coaxed, post mortem, into a little more sense of moral mortality. That would make it more poignant. At least, so you gather, the ape does not use words like
poignant, but you take its meaning. Interesting. Now, I don't have enough inescapable truth, nor do I have the necessary penance excess. So we're just going to leave the ape alone. Because the price of failing a penance is relatively high, like it's, it's invoking terror, which I don't want to do, I don't feel any particular need to keep going. So we'll just return to the center. Out again. They send a devil to escort you back to the center of Carillon. You wouldn't get out again otherwise, he says, trimming his lamp. Then he picks up his staff and points in the direction of the dark tunnel. Well... Since my skills are not particularly good in any of these things, I suppose the better move is just to go for now. Let me just make sure that the overgrown shrine is not different. An overgrown shrine. The path leads you to a broken statue, seemingly ignored by the devils of Carillon, except for whoever placed the freshly lit candles at its feet. The face is poorly carved, but its features unmistakable. The burrower below stares at you through one gemstone eye and an empty eye socket. Contemplate the statue. I believe this should help us lower what little terror we have. A terrifying visage, but with something comforting to offer, too. Yep, terror has fallen. Finding the peace. While the statue is the raw material of nightmares, there is something soothing about the idea that even a beast like this might be harnessed. That there is a chance of such an ally for those who crack the code of offerings and prayers. Whether it is actually listening, it is impossible to tell. The thought that it might, however, is something to hold on to in the dark. Alright, nothing else to do here then. Time to go. Yeah, per usual, my instinct is like, mmm, the devils are up to something. And I do not know what the something is, which makes me naturally very nervous. They can't help it, really. It's just the nature of being a devil. Birds have got to fly, fish have got to swim, devil's got a scheme to get souls. So I do think that this rehabilitation center is at least in part about making souls more attractive to steal. Like, that's why they offer the service to other people. I remember being told specifically that the best way to not join a cult is to not talk to people in that cult. Simply because no matter how rational or talented you are, Somebody else has definitely already thought of all of the arguments for and against joining this cult and how to twist people into joining. Like, it could happen to anyone. So, the best way to deal with it is to simply not engage. An abandoned signal box. I kind of remember this. Window cracks have accredited a filling of moss green dust. Once white paint is yellowed and peeling, the signal box possesses a faded dignity like a beleaguered butler. It was designed with pride to be part of the great folly, the Isambard line. Inside, beneath a desk covered with rusted levers, is a luggage trunk. Captains in dire need can borrow from the cachet inside, but custom dictates that they must la later replenish it. Alright. So London fell and encountered the devils. What deal did they make to get? Get into the skies? A good question. We might be able to posit that at least in part, because devils are regular visitors to fallen London, when London rose, any of the devils who happened to be there are there as well. I don't know, I can still sense that there's some sort of underpinning to the devils that I don't yet understand, like I just haven't come across it in the lore, but I can tell that there's a reason that they're up here. I sort of think it has something to do with bees. But anywho, I'm going to read this ledger. Captains who withdraw from the cachet should note their name and ship and what they took. Occasionally, they add anecdotes. A recent entry. The handwriting is poor, but legible. Captain Bolade withdrew supplies. There is a column for miscellaneous notes. The captain writes feverishly of a light that danced at some distance before them. After some hours following, it abruptly grew brighter, getting brighter as it did. Then nothing, just gone. Sounds like the stuff here. We're just gonna go ahead and leave. Away. The stokers work vigorously. This place makes them yearn for the riotous camaraderie of New Winchester. It is a little creepy. It's not like the universe is creepy, but it's a little creepy. When are you visiting Europe again? If I'm lucky, I'll be able to visit at the end of the year. 
Oh, hold on. It seems to have passed me. Brigands can't carry, though. Sullivan's son. Oh, I don't think I can stop here. Nope. That's a saying. And we sure, certainly don't have a saying. When the nameless monument deteriorates here, the wind whistling through the solemn stones. Probably need to go in the right direction. Maybe an important facet of this whole traveling business. We're trying to get munitions out to Lustrum. I don't know, I don't recall having any other business there, but it's pretty common at this point for me to just show up at a port and go, Oh right, I was supposed to do a thing here. But it is indeed a nice long ride of choo-choo. I like it, I find it to be very soothing. Oh god. It was soothing until there was a crow woman who wanted to murder me. We should be close. Right, this is the mountain. Cautious driver, hours and mind in Lustrum, good for going faster than possible. Going to get some? I mean, probably not, incautious driver. Because it would mean dealing with the company, and I hate those guys. Parking is still kind of a nightmare. I am getting better at parking through this through the ports, but it's still kind of a lot. All right, the frantic hustling heart of Lustrum, crammed with prospectors, peddlers, and purveyors of essential and occasionally legal services, but only occasionally, lest we lest we forget where we are. Most businesses take place here. I'm sorry, most business takes place here unless you're a dreamer seeking your fortune on the claim field. Well. Let's head into the shops, because I've got, I've got the munitions. Monetary munitions, explosives for Lustrum. An opportunity for fearless captains, Sweet Jane's Counting House on Lustrum requires five crates of munitions in order to enforce a claim against the Windward Company. Remuneration generous, Lustrum lies to the north of New Winchester. Well, here you go. Sweet Jane takes the munitions herself hauling the crates into the back room with a surprising speed. She refuses to be drawn on why she needs them, but she does throw in a significant bonus when the subject comes up. We've got some tackety favors and some experience, enough for a facet, I think. Also, bargains available for some penny dreadfuls. I don't know that we need any penny dreadfuls just now. Let's head to the trading post, because I do need fuel and supplies. And let's take a facet. Oh, I can't take a facet. I'm still short. How short am I? Bummer. 125 points. Ugh. Okay. Fine. 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 I think the claim fields are specifically if I want to. Yeah. I'm still not convinced that I should necessarily take a claim in Lustrum, at least not at this time. Let's go explore Lustrum. What was a briefly modest, pleasant town on the Mother of Mountains now runs on increasingly desperate dreams of riches. Fools sell their futures for the chance to mine years from the mountain's frozen sides. Sharper minds sell pickaxes, supplies, and the promise of a warm bed at the end of a bitter day's work. I'm gonna get my port report. Ours are the new gold in Albion and the Reach. While Lustrum's fortunes remain, it is of interest to many limited prospects. So much for the quiet retirement village that used to be here. The rush of prospectors has ripped the civility from the place as efficiently as the geodes from the mountainside. The scars that remain are no less vivid. 
Fewer and fewer prospectors return with geodes of hours, and the cost of processing them all off-site grows every day. Still, for now, Lustrum thrives and offers the promise of riches for any lucky or industrious miner, willing to come and risk everything in the snow and the mud. I'll take that. Hmm. Let's also explore Lustrum. Your wandering takes you to the edge of town. Just want to see. When they first arrived, the prospectors hastily constructed tents and shacks next to the prim houses of the Londoners desiring proximity to the mountain. Now, most of those houses are deserted or taken over by squatters. The tents and shacks spread out from the shanty town to anywhere with enough space to raise a roof. Your wandering takes you too far, foul breath spiced with rum. Something sharp in your back. Just a few solves, friend, whisper your voice. Don't act like you can't afford it. Hmm. We could turn the tables. I don't know. I'll just pay. When it comes to your money or your life, it's better usually to just give your money. A few sovereigns? Bargain. You turn slowly, reaching into your pocket for a few loose coins. Behind you is a slight woman in a long, muddy dress. Not one of the miners, but a lady of former class, an original lustrum pioneer. I'm sorry, she whispers, taking the money. I have to get out of here, I... She hitches up the tattered edge of her dress and flees as quickly as she can. I hope that she gets the help that she needs, because she clearly needed some help. Let's go ahead and visit the tea shop. Visit Murgatroyd's Golden Tea Shop. Some come for the fine teas, others for the carefully prepared manila folders underneath the counter. All agree that the scones are divine. Right, this is a place that's actually about spies. I remember that much. An oasis of London civility and culture in a town with little of either, Melusine Murgatroyd stands proudly behind the display of fresh scones and slightly yellowing cream buns. At small wooden tables, successful prospectors and their significant others welcome themselves to the world of the nouveau riche with a spot of afternoon tea. Pinky fingers stand proud and erect from bone china cups, covertly topped with moonshine. I have been told that the raising of the pinky thing is very much not the case. It is not, in fact, good etiquette to raise your pinky like that. Still, let's enjoy a lovely cup of tea. A reminder of proper civilization is a thing to be cherished, especially out here in the Reach. Now, I believe we've already gotten the indulgence blend. Let's try the Empress's favor, the taste of home. I forgot to read the thing. Melusine's maids hurry around serving a clientele more used to bellowing at bartenders than sitting politely with exquisitely cut cucumber sandwiches. Eventually, it is your turn to be served. You are invited to choose your preferred blend. Empress's favor, a taste of home. Familiar, comfortable, with just a hint of lingering bitterness, a true Londoner's blend. Bitterness in tea just means that you've overbrewed it, and that's your damn fault. Speak to Melusine Murgatroyd. She single-handedly runs both the family business and the family business. Unless you count the small gaggle of overworked and underpaid maids, which Melusine does not. Right, I don't think that any of these things are new or different, but I will take a look. Smelling faintly of burned hair, she tinkers with the latest invention intended to be her ticket out of both this no-horse town and her father's control. Eyebrows, she confirms, are a small price to pay for scientific progress. Look at her inventions. Her workshop has slowly taken over the back room of the salon. An assortment of terrible opportunities. Melusine glows with pride as you examine her mostly untested inventions. The clockwork lens array that offers superhuman levels of telescopic sight, provided you can insert all six sharp brass hooks under your eyelids. Ooh, no thank you. The internal combustion privy, ideal for handling unpleasant waste products and warming whatever's left of your house after the inevitable explosion. An automated pickaxe capable of striking Earth seven times a second. Melusine nods, irritated. Pity about the mere bone shattering issue about the minor bone shattering issue. I don't I don't think this world has an OSHA, but it sure sounds like they could use one. The only thing she won't let you poke at is a twisted arrangement of glassware and, ex and electricity in the corner. That's not mine. Not entirely. I'm still working on that. Complicated. You know if you know. If you don't, I shouldn't say. Well, we don't know, so I guess that's the end of that. Um, 
goodness, I don't know that there's anything else. The mountain sings. Wind whistles through the mountain's caves, promising good luck to the miners below. They raise their tankards and toast the fortune of the promise. I will join in their celebration. We don't need any more crew. Any passing miner will happily fill your tankard. And we are briefly without terror! I chose wisely. A rousing chorus. Cheers rise to the mountain and its bounty of ours until the soft pan pipe sound fade, sounds fade and the back-breaking work of the mining must begin again. Another drink or two, of course, something to ward off the chill of the cold mountain slopes. I'll take that, thanks. Okay. So there's really- it doesn't look like I have any task to do here. What we might do then, since we have the space, is we'll take back this Ministry Approved Literature, we'll put it in the bank, and just in case we get another opportunity to use it, we'll already have it. Since I don't seem to have anything that we're working on here. We're without terror, we resupply. Is the Mother of Mountains related to Mount Nomad? I sure hope not. I don't think so, but I don't have particularly good evidence for why I don't think so. Mount Nomad was a mountain of obsidian. This mountain, whatever it is, does not appear to be of obsidian make. No, don't come at me, Canton Carry. I don't want to fight you. I don't want to fight anyone. Kinda looks like you want to fight me, though, huh? Screw man! A Canton Carry placated. It still got a hit off, but we got it! The Canton Carry are lumbering, half-fossilized isopods that will attack anything they disapprove of. Given that they are very ancient and murderously grumpy, that means almost everything. The defeated Canton Carry has been blasted to smithereens. Only a cloud of stone chunks remains. Alright. We could disperse the rubble to lose terror, but we don't have a lot of terror because we got rid of all of it. We have a fair chance of getting something, an uncanny specimen. Let's try that. Perhaps you'll find something of scientific interest if you sift through the pulverized rubble. Partial success. So we got some sovereigns. Too thorough a job. None of the remaining pieces are whole enough to be of interest, either academic or ghoulish. <coughs> Pardon me. However, you do find a few fragments of carapace, veined with what looks like gold. Thank you. Alright. Hooray! We dealt with the Canton Carry. With its jerk face. Oh, it's so frustrating. We're so close to having the experience we need so that I can get that last facet to level up the, the train a little bit. And we're just delayed. Also, I totally forgot to research which train I should buy. That now occurs to me. Well. I think I had more or less decided anyway, so maybe we'll just get that settled in. Oh, but that means we'll need a train name, if anybody has good train names that they can think of. Right, we'll be looking for the... there's the station, and then we head south towards Karuma. I don't think we even need to stop at Carillon because we've already gotten our port report. There's nothing more for us there. Oh, we did it! We got our last facet! A Canton Carry placated. I already read this. Um, I am going to take my 50 50 to get some sovereigns. Prize precious stones from its carapace. Sometimes clusters of jasper, tourmaline, or agate can be found embedded in the calcified plates. A partial success. Older, more awful things. 
Hauling the creature alongside your locomotive, you deploy hammers and pry bars. There, valuable stones glimmer amidst the whorls of uncanny fossils. The fossil shapes are sinuous and predatory, preserved for unknown eons in the Kent and Carey stony skin. I actually don't have a theme for trains. I will veto things that are reminiscent of Bodie McBoatface and things in that nature. Like, if you want me to name the train Choo Choo, we're, we're probably going to have a problem. But otherwise, give it a name that you would enjoy having as your own train. All right, you have learned from your experiences. You're damn right I have. Take a facet. None of these, aw, oh, you bastards. I think we're gonna be short again because none of these are irons, dominant ones. Oh no. What the hell, guys? That's so unnecessary. Like, we're not gonna get any higher than three, and three will not be enough. For fuck's sake. Okay. Come on, jerk train game. We were so close. Can I go back? Can I take a facet and it's gonna be different? It's not gonna be different. Mother. Because we needed four and we're just going to get three. Oh, that makes me so angry. This stupid game. Well, mirrors is my weakest. An interlude in red and gold. Hold on. Family footsteps, spell in prison, a metamorphosis below stairs. You lost your mind once. They put you in a splendid hotel managed by a cheery gentleman who would determine when you could leave. I think I know that guy. How colorful the other guests were, how red the curtains, how gold the fittings, how secure the locks. Eventually you were allowed to leave, but was your recovery genuine? Yes, you're feeling much better, thank you. Through trial and error and determination, you learn to tell what is what is from what is not. The manager said he was sad to see you go. Neat. We're one short. Oh, hold on. It looks like I can swap out for the fortunate navigator. Maybe I can only do that. Officers and mascots can only be assigned or unsigned while docking. Okay. Just checking. Just checking what my options are in their entirety. Might be that we change over from the Skyworn Urchin to the Blemigan Voyager because they've got a little more skill. Okay. Fine. Jerk came. That was so mean. I worked so hard to get that last facet and it didn't want to give me an iron facet. Ooh. Those are all good, Wanderer. I thank you for your contribution, because I would absolutely be like, uh, generic name. Yes. Those are much better. Particularly like the failsafe. Failsafes give me warm, fuzzy feelings. What can I say? Dock here. Get trade. My officers gonna swap out the Blemigan Voyager and that should be enough I don't think I have anything here to get we'll pick up an extra crate of supplies I do quite like that all of the supply costs are the same everywhere I go that's actually been quite enjoyable I'm very appreciative of that 
and if I weren't in such a hurry to go and buy some new stuff, I probably would take the longer way around. See if I can't find any bronze wood for Port Abin, but it's not important, not when there's a new train to get, and maybe possibly a canning station to deal with. Those are much better things. This close to the Mother of Mountains, the sky grows cold, and you include Dawn's coats and gloves. I do wonder if I could cut through here to Port Avon. That would be kind of nice. Sometimes Port Avon also sells the bronze wood. One of our opportunities is for Bronzewood to Port Avon, but that is also a place that sells Bronzewood. Sometimes you get lucky. Kinda looks like this is gonna work, though. This does indeed just cut over pretty cleanly. Port Avon itself. Well, would you look at that? I love not having to travel around a whole mess of stuff just to find our way back to the places we keep going. Shortcuts forever. Old stones and forgotten rooms lie tumbled across the sky. Yeah, the physics of all of this is still pretty weird to me. How is all of this stuff floating? And yet we can breathe the air like it's not proper space. It's also not not space. Because things are floating. Alright, Port Avon. The safe word and is bin is bananas. I kinda like that. Alright, Port Avon. I just want to write a port report, guys. The locals are willing to update you on the news. There's not much to share. Were it not for the talk of smugglers and Sky Beast, you could easily confuse this place for a village on the world you left behind. It's quite peaceful here, apart from some fuss over a newspaper delivery. The villagers frown and change the subject when you ask about it. I mean, that's their prerogative and whatnot. Okay. So no bargains available. They still want their bronze wood. Alright, alright. don't think that there's anything particularly necessary to do here. So we'll go ahead and get going. We've got, we've got a train to buy. We've got a train to buy. We've got a cannery station thing to buy. We've got stuff to do. I just wanted my extra port report. Give me a little buffer. I guess I do need to see where we're at in terms of income. It might be that I need to do a few more opportunities before I can comfortably afford the train and the cannery station and also have a buffer of money to keep buying supplies. Climber of New Winchester can be heard on the wind. Familiar is a disagreeable uncle. We'll come from the north and head down. That way we can stop by and get our port reports in. Remember to sell your port reports before you dock. See? You get me. The 300 extra is always a good thing to have. And I think trading in the port reports is part of what lowers the terror. Not that 18 is particularly high, but you know I would travel on zero if I could. Wispy condensation trails across the sky, the ghosts of passing trains. Nope. I thought that I could pass underneath. 
with that buttress, and I sure couldn't. Hi, Hordian, hello. Programming is fun, is what I do for a living, but sometimes it feels like a maelstrom of nonsense and chaos. I have always felt that programming was a maelstrom of nonsense and chaos. Like, don't get me wrong, it makes a kind of sense, but also when you're in the middle of it, it's like, but why? Why does that work and not the other thing? Hello and welcome in. Here to visit Victory Hall, here to drop off port reports. Oh, the stovepipe's fortunes is now at zero. Does that mean that they've, they've won the war? I'm gonna trade in my favor for a savage secret. And let's get as many of those as we can. Let's make variables, words, and cause mass confusion. I mean, programming's kind of wild. I know we're supposed- I know when you do programming it's supposed to be like a highly logical thing, but I gotta tell ya, a lot of it is genuinely just praying that it worked this time. I even know a programmer who has a lucky programming hat. And they are convinced that wearing the lucky hat makes the programming come out correctly. I don't know, man. You can you can logic humans as much as you like. We're still going to be superstitious weirdos. All right, let me stop by the bank before I forget to stop by the bank because I picked up even more ministry-approved literature. We're looking for bronze wood, so I'm going to hold on to that. Let's go to the train yard. Well, actually, let's first get our canning thing. Because I because uh, I will want the cannery before I want the new train. The Durandal Pressure Canning System, a space-efficient device allowing you to butcher, can, and store certain sky beasts, converting them into supplies. Yes, please. And I'll buy it. See, and I think now we're a bit short. Welcome to the train yard. I was interested in this escort. Oh, we could actually afford this. It'll have about a thousand left. It is highly logical, but the problem is that nobody agrees with nobody. I mean, that's part of it. So everyone does things their own way. For me, my bigger problem with programming is that there was always little dead bits of extra stuff that didn't need to be there. It didn't hurt anything until you tried to change stuff later, and then it caused problems. That's my experience with coding stuff, but that's because I do modding things. Like, for me, it's all somebody else's code to start with. I don't freshly generate much of anything. Alright, so I was going to get this Bedivere class escort. Only recently emerging from the steam and sapphire engine yards, the Bedivere is a sturdy, flexible engine favored by explorers. It's got more hull capacity. It's a little, it's a little tougher. It can take more of a beating. It does use fuel a little bit faster, but not a ton. Which is a mess because you use stuff that other people used and those other people didn't agree with the stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. <laughs> it's your problem to make sense of things and fit the square peg into the round hole. That's basically my entire experience with coding. Again, I always came at it from a modding perspective and frequently from me reading off of somebody else, else reading off of somebody else's original work. Usually a few degrees removed remove from what was originally put there. All right, I'm gonna buy this train. And courtesy of Wanderer Down, all aboard the failsafe. No Moloch class liner for us because it seems to be a guzzler. So this is the reclaimed locomotive that we originally had. And this is the Courser. Yep. I like our, our choice. Now, let's get into the hold, because I got stuff, right? We gotta... Gotta equip that, for one. That looks good. We need to get more bronze wood. We could go south and pick more up. Let's also head to the bazaar. They're still looking for munitions. 
I still don't have a good place to get munitions, is kind of the thing. New prospects will be available in 17 days. Kind of a bummer. Well, let's go to the market, because we still need to buy supplies and such, like. So we've got 16 supply spaces. And then we'll get four of the bronze wood, and that'll help us. Yes. Okay, so I think the move now is going to be... Let me pull up the chart. We need to pick up bronze wood, which is probably going to be... Well, I guess it'll be more likely here from the circus. We'll swing by the circus, grab our bronze wood. We should explore in here. I get the feeling that Titania is going to be here. Possibly here. Possibly there. <laughs> There's a lot of places it could be. Maybe actually the move is to go to the circus and then this way. Right? And then on the way back, if we have the supply still, we'll head up to Port Avon and drop off that bronze wood. And if not, we'll be okay. Yeah, I think that's going to be the move. Now that we've spent all of that money, let's go ahead and start recouping some of our losses here. And we'll take a look at some of these other things that I've just been avoiding. This is a big train. This is a big train that handles like a big train. All right, we're off to the circus. A couple of reasons. At the circus, provided the urchin is doing their damn job, we can reduce some of this terror. And also we can pick up the bronze wood that we need. spent so much of that money, it'll be a good idea to start recouping it. Again, our actual goal is wealth. Like, our actual ambition is the wealth ambition. We're supposed to be making money. But I do want to find Titania. First of all, I have a passenger I'm supposed to drop off there. Second of all, they might have some of this stuff I'm having a difficult time finding. This place was a battlefield. This place was a battlefield, a grave of tachydes and stovepipes alike. And avoiding these guys is going to be worse, I'm sure. Hello, I'm here for a circus. I'm here for a grumbly, sad circus. The princess glances at polymers. I considered running away with them. Always refused. Probably because they knew trouble when they saw it. Alright. We're chugging. We're chugging in. New arrivals at the circus. This lowers some of our terror. A fire burns by the obelisk where newcomers mingle. None of them seemed to know what drew them there what drew them here save that they had nowhere else they knew they should be. They trade stories in the last of the liquor from their flasks, finding solace here for reasons that even they can't seem to explain. Let's listen to the stories. Who were they before they were called here? Tales of life and loss, the broken, the disavowed, the fugitives. Every visitor has their own story and a hole in their heart. A few demonstrate acts with which they hope to join the circus itself. Others talk of their plans to leave this place and resume their lives. Not today, but tomorrow. Or the day after that. Perhaps. Alright, back to Gervais's rest and the inconceivable circus. Oh, we get free tickets to the circus! I love that. First port report. This doesn't seem a location of tactical importance. Even so, there may be... There may be interest in those who... In who wow. There may be interest in who attends. The big top looms dramatically in the fog out of the reach, but it's not nearly as imposing as the massive obelisk floating nearby. Some enterprising soul has hung bunting between it and the big top, 
As for the circus itself, few captains have deviated from their usual routes to stop off here. It's not exactly bustling, but it's much livelier than a graveyard now. Because we helped. We helped them, which made it much more lively than a graveyard. So, I can collect free tickets. Of course, you don't have to pay. You're part of the family. You're damn right. I'm just seeing if this is any different. And it's not. Okay. Okay. We now have our tickets. I'm going to attend another performance. What wonders await you this evening? The tent is half full, as captains with nothing better to offer their crews have stopped in for a brief respite. The ringmaster gives introductions, and the act begins. The humiliated magician's attempt to saw his assistant in half comes to an unfortunate end. High above, the bereaved acrobat again performs their half of the routine for a tiny amount of applause. We brought the other acrobat back, though. Afterwards, the pensive clown trips into the spotlight, dropping the balls he juggles. It's silent enough to hear them hit the floor. The strong woman asks the crowd if they brought anything for her to lift. They cheer as a group of ten attendees struggle to wheel out a wagon full of crates and barrels. Not only does she lift them all in turn, she overturns the wagon single-handedly at the end. A rapturous applause. We did that too! We posted the signs for the strong woman so that people could remember to bring things for her to lift, and they remembered now. I'll take that stretch, thank you, Hordian, and the hydrate too. Coming right up. Always appreciate that. I am a person who inhabits a physical body. As such, I do probably periodically need to do something to take care of it. <clears throat> Here we are. Thank you very much for that. Always appreciate the streamer care pack. Alright, let's visit the amusements. This should be enjoyable. There we go. Lower my damn terror already. The Midway Calls. You spend some time watching the sideshow attractions. The amazing invisible flea circus is immediately disappointing. The circus's strong woman, on the other hand, is arguably too good for the place. Effortlessly raising all manner of heavy things over her head. The problem is that she makes it look easy makes it look so easy that the audience just shrug. It seems that the only thing she cannot lift is the mood. And Medic is here. Hello. Good time zone to you. We got a new train. It's called the Failsafe. Go behind the tent. And we were able to finally get our upgrade for the cannery and the hold space, so we're making progress. Reunite the acrobatic twins. You've brought the errant one back to the circus. I wonder when we'd see each other again, one twin remarks to the other. The other replies, how did you know I'd return? You always have before, I'm glad you're alright. They wander off, each catching up as to what has passed in their time apart. Stop wandering away! If you're partners, you're supposed to be partners. Alright. So we've talked to the strong woman and we've talked to the acrobatic twins. Let's talk to the humiliated magician this time. He leans beneath a faded poster of himself, smoking a cheap malod malodorous tobacco. It breaks my heart you had to sit through that, he said, nodding towards the big top. Sometimes I wonder why I left the mahogany hall. Then I remember how much plenty paid before this whole place lost its funding. Puts out a cigarette on the poster and then tosses it into the overturned top hat. Oh, you know what? It's that we're supposed to go and see the ringmaster, and they assign us the next task. The door is open. From inside, you can hear the constant ruffling of a deck of cards. Hats, cats, bats, and rats. The ringmaster is sat on a fat cushion, idly shuffling a worn pack of playing cards. He smiles wearily at you. I asked the cards about you. He draws from the top of the deck and sets them on the table. They said you can help. He places them back into the deck and bids you to shuffle and draws for yourself. The cards are the same. He smiles, the same weary smile. Looks like they haven't changed their minds. Right. Props or costumes for the clowns. I do like costumes. Accept a commission to purchase costumes for the clown. 
Two of cats, the costumes are not for the clown, but for his pet geese. Cuddles and ruffles. He's not funny without them, confides the ringmaster. His best acts require them, but they won't perform unless they're in costume, and unfortunately the geese have a habit of destroying them after a few shows. We have a friend in Port Prosper who will be happy to supply us with costumes. We've put the money, but not the transport. He hands you a small purse. Well, we can do that. Let's get out of here, then. Head to the shops. Munitions? I wasn't here looking for munitions. I was here looking for bronze wood. There's both. But the thing is, there were, there were opportunities up there for music, munitions. And the bronze wood is always available. The munitions are not. But I can only get three. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave that for now. We will buy those. We're good on supplies. I'd pick up another barrel of fuel if we had it, but we don't. Okay. Let me pop open. All right, so Port Prosper is there. I'm not super sure where Titania is. My guess is that it's either in here or in here. We could just go in here and maybe circle back to Port Prosper to pick up the thing, the costumes, and then circle back. That might that might be how we do this today. Look at our fancy new train. It's kind of a big one. It's not nearly as maneuverable as our little spatchcock was. That was, that's what it was called. That was the name of our last train. A reclaimed spatchcock was the type of train it was. All right, we need to head probably in a more interior way. I can see through this long stretch of land, but that's not gonna help us, so. In and around. And because we have a little bit more fuel, this isn't gonna be nearly as painful. I hope. Zessing wastes. Nope, we don't have anything for mining. So that's just not our concern at this time. See if we can't find this mysterious Titania. Oh gosh, what the hell is that? What the hell is that? Oh Jesus, why? Hybris. We're gonna find Hybris, aren't we? That was one of the other ports I was missing too. And we know that it has some kind of massive fungal forest, well. Gracious. Gracious. What sort of monster have we encountered? You know, if this were fallen London, I would be like, yeah, my giant mushroom, or I'm sorry, Sunless Sea, I would be like, yeah, my giant mushroom friend. The Uter Shroom. All good things, all good things. I mean, maybe an agenda of, you know, Myosinian domination, but the editor shroom was nice. This is just sinister. take a little bit longer for this particular train to overheat. So that's a good thing, actually. That allows me to fire off more shots in combat. The Marich Marauder is defeated. You prepare to board the buckled wreckage, poised to plunder the plunderers. Behind you, someone is humming a song of victory. Loot the hold. Some of it is even intact. You may gain unusual cargo. 
What could it be? A collapsed jewelry box. Something precious has been concealed. You found the ill-fated engine before you visited Hybris. Yes, I did. Um, the Bedivere was the new engine class we got. A twinkle of gold upon a bed of velvet, a piece of worn jewelry, a name is inscribed on it. Too faded now to read. Yep, no, we had not discovered Hybris before we found the, what was it? The Percival? Gosh, more of these guys. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. I can't take them both on, I don't think. I can maybe kite. Oh god. Oh god, it's Wily. Oh god, it's Wily. God. And it has no self-preservation instincts. Stop moving! Dead. We're heating. We're heating. Nope, I hear you, game. I hear you, game. I hear you, game. friggin' stressful. Jeez. The guests evicted. Their stolen home burst open under your gunfire. Thousands of wriggling guests, ugh, spill out into the night, glistening like ooze from a blister after it was lanced. Okay. Choices. Terror has increased pretty significantly. It might not be a terrible idea to consider repair the hull. I think the terror is maybe the bigger threat here. Hmm, it's easier to recoup terror than damaged hull. Salvage the scrap to repair your hull, after you've thoroughly scoured it of any clinging guests, of course. Not by a lot. Hatching her up, soon the, the sound of hammering resounds through the hull as engineers apply steel bandages to her scars. Well, that was one dangerous thing. There was another one back here still. Although the best game with this kind of combat is Star Sector. I've never played Star Sector. I'll take your word for it, though. Fates Fall. I don't know, it just said that I could interact with it and I've never, never seen any of this. What remains of the behemoth's carapace is scarred with sickles. Most are marred and broken, some still holding a sullen, resentful power. Your locomotive is stopped on a broad, flat section of the shell. The few sickles nearby are too cracked to risk much harm. We could repair the hull. It's only a 49% chance, though. We could delve deeper into the body, or we could just leave. I'm just gonna leave. I'm so sketched out by this place. the heck this is, it can certainly wait. Oh look! I found our friends. Oh god. I'm just in crew and terror like crazy now. Dead. Okay. 
The Reach Marauder is defeated. You prepare to board. Yes, we know. Songs of victory. Got it. Unusual items or... We'll, we'll raid the safe. I can't really afford any additional terror right now. It's just climbing like crazy in this area. The Marauders haunt the Reach like bats in the attic. They spend their ill-gotten gains in the more licentious ports, acquiring sins in the riot of Lustrum before weeping their confessions at Magdalene's, but a few meager funds remain. Okay, we need to get out of this area. It's just making my, my terror rise. It is not nice. There are just high terror areas in this game, and this is one of them. Man, I sure hope that I don't immediately die after getting my fancy new engine. Explore the map, I said. It'll be fun, I said. General's weed. We're still accruing terror, but not nearly at the speed we were. Three supplies and three fuel. We're doing okay. I'd like to find Hybris on the off chance that it'll let me resupply. Oh my god, what the fuck is that? Oh no. Oh no, is it fast? I'm just gonna run. I'm just gonna run. I'm not I'm not here for that. Ugh. Well, I now understand why I maybe didn't seek out Hybris before. Yeah, the plan is to run because screw all of this. No, I'm not going to fight a giant tentacle fungus ball. It's, we're not doing it. Absolutely not. I just want to find... I just want to find a port. <laughs> Your scout has discovered something out in the sky. Oh, we're very close is why. Well, this looks like lodgings, at least. Elfrid and Kalara's farm. That's a tackety scout. We're just gonna hope it doesn't hit me at this point. For very interesting definition of fun. Oh, it's not a scout. It's a thing with guests. Hybris, a new port captain. The crew crowds to the windows. A fledgling colony trying to dig its fingernails deep enough into the spongy fungal fabric of the Reach to cling on when hard times come. It is a sad truth that many more settlements are founded than flourish. I mean, yeah. It lowered our terror some, finding the new place. Hybris. Nestled amid sprawling, sporing gardens of fung- Oops, sorry. A fungus hybrid is a colony of octogenarians. Rotting buildings slough gently into decay. Maintenance is poor. The population aged. An insect speckled with fungus flies past drowsily. Growth asks no license. Sorry, I thought that was a person talking. Growth asks no license, reads a barely legible sign staked into a collapsed pile of fungal eggs. Yikes. Okay, well, a venerable welcoming party has gathered. The wizened mayor approaches. His back is bent, but his pace is steady. He has a firm handshake. Welcome to our little hideaway. Watch your step. That one's about to fruit. True enough, the little white sack at your feet suddenly splits, snaking tendrils of red fungus exploding outwards. A mayoral assistant, a severe woman of, of slightly less advanced years, guides the mayor to a nearby bench. You may stay as long as you like. Okay, admittedly, probably not going to be long. Let's, um, get our port report. Not much seems to happen in this sleepy place, but perhaps someone will be interested. Life moves slowly here. There are arguments over the rules of bowls and the correct amount of time to steep tea. The station master seems to avoid the villagers. There is an unusual unique quality to the starlight which filters through the underside of the caps. 
Alright, well, we've got that. We are also looking for Madame Lumiere. A filmmaker should be should be difficult to miss in this hushed, secluded place. Loud curses lead you towards an elderly woman fiddling with an antiquated camera. She sighs and shuts the frame. That'll do. She offers a trembling hand. Lumiere, once a renowned explorer and filmmaker, now, as you see... A cough rattles through her. You from New Winchester? I'll leave with you. I can pay my way. I'm done here, and my lungs wouldn't tolerate much more of this. She smiles warmly. I've a premiere to plan. Well, we at least found the filmmaker that we said we'd find, right? Right? I'm so wigged out. It's so scary, there's angry fungus that wants to eat me. Or possess me, hard to say. Collect a sample of hybris pus. We need this for, um, the folks over at the nature reserve. It oozes out of the fungal body, just as it would an infected sore on your arm. The difficulty in collecting samples isn't in having to climb some remote peak or fighting off creatures who are all teeth and claws. It's abiding the smell. Yikes. Alright. Let's try... Well, before I, before I get too deep into people's personal stuff, let's just a general exploring of the settlement, maybe. But I'm gonna stop at the shops before I forget to. Well, it's cer it's nice that we've got supplies, but what I really need is fuel. Don't particularly need hours right this second either. Okay. Explore the settlement. Hybris has only a handful of buildings clustered among the folds of fungus, yet life goes on here. Life moves at a slow pace on Hybris. Several colonists tend to the allotments, while others sit squabbling outside the Brendan. Periodically, a lady emerges with tea and fungal crackers. A carpenter struggles with the fretwork of the, on the new town hall. The carvings are of factories and faceless workers. I can't remember what they look like, he says sadly. Let's take tea at the Brendan, since that seems to be the place where it's happening. The only lodging house in Hybris, the only building with more than one story, the smell of stewed tea permeates the dilapidated boards. A large woman of advanced years produces a pot of green tea and doilies from a moldering tea chest. She blows the spores off the cusps. Back there, I used to read the leaves on our breaks. She peers into your finished cup. I'm sorry, I don't see a long future for you, my love. Make the most of what you have. Wow! If you're a fortune teller, you're supposed to lie and say I have a very long and bright future. We can also wander the wilds of Hybris, swamp and marsh, fungus and frond. Nowhere in the Reach has been so thoroughly colonized. It would be a shame not to see the sights. Fingers of black and red mushrooms rise from the sodden ground. Tendrils of white fungus form vast arches. An earthy smell pervades the air and follows you through the swamps like a lost dog. Yikes. In the middle of the grove of writhing sacks, you find a plinth adorned with a broken and twisted nameplates, the shape of collars. Rebaizen work world has, the imprint has been imprinted on each. Interesting. Make a delicate inquiry to the wizened mare. Everyone here is very old indeed. Is there a lower age limit on settling in Hybris? The wizened mare chuckles. Oh no, we'd welcome youth, but we don't get many settlers coming out this way. We're happily secluded here. He smiles wistfully as across the marsh his mayoral assistant trounces an unfortunate at the bowls. Our best years were spent by others. The wizened mayor glances towards the town hall where preparations are being made for a performance. We have plans to hopefully change that, though. The colonists are enjoying a second youth on Hybris. Oh no, what crazy nonsense are we gonna get up to now? Okay. Just checking to see if it was different and it wasn't. Trade with the locals. Oh, I see. We were already here. 
Nope, we don't need to buy any hours. Okay. Well, we need to get out of here, but the thing is, I don't know where out is going to spit us out to. Because I'm pretty sure that up there is just going to be a single block of land. At this point, we're going to be running the risk of running out of fuel. Because there's just not much over here. Bugger. Bugger. Structural damage. So funny voices are back. Funny voices are trying. We're working on it. You emerged from a recent battle with what initially appeared to be superficial damage, but now your chief engineer tells you it conceals a deeper structural issue. Unless it's fixed, the integrity of the hull is at risk. Alright. Well, it looks like our best bet is for me to fix it myself. Venture outside to fix it yourself. You'll need a nimble hand and a sure step. The more damaged you are, the harder this will be. Success. A vision of the heavens. Clamoring across your hull, you reinforce several of the braces that are supporting your locomotive's plating. Then you pause to admire the view. You stand upon the cusp of heaven. A sprinkle of stars gleam coldly ahead. Below, celestial mists roil, roll and boil like a witch's stew. Somewhere in the distance, a scribe spinster wails. The sky is at your feet. I mean, we say the sky is at my feet until I run out of fuel. And then what? Maybe there isn't an exit on this side. Because this all looks to be locked land. There's maybe something connecting here, but... Shoot. Mostly I'd have to pass through that really... awful... terrible, no good, very bad, horror-filled place if we don't find a break. Agatha's way. It was just a very high terror area that I'd prefer to not pass over again if I could avoid it. Not that I plan on coming to Hybris very often. This place gives me the willies. Not a lot of places in this game have like made me fearful just passing through. This one sure does. There is something in me that thoroughly and profoundly believes that the fungus is not my friend. And because the fungus is not my friend, being where the fungus is, is not good for my health. Looks like we've broken through. That's a little bit by the skin of my teeth, but still. I think we'll be able to make it back up. It might be a little closer than I'd like, though. At this point, Hybris might not be worth visiting just because of the amount of fuel it takes to get there. <sighs> nope. And because the train's a little bigger, I'm still figuring out how to navigate it without it being the worst thing ever. It looks like we can go broadly north from here. Something ours. Okay, the Marich Marauder is defeated. Um, let's loot it. I was hoping maybe for fuel, but I guess this is fine. We might need to start picking our battles a little more carefully. 
fighting with all of its moving around and swinging and whatnot take quite a lot of fuel, so maybe, since I'm a little more nervous about it, we leave it alone. See, they're gonna, they're gonna try to chase me and we're just gonna try to outrun it. That does work sometimes. Sometimes you can just outrun the things. Nope, no thank you. No thank you on engaging in combat. So I'm very close to my last barrel of fuel and it's making me nervous because Hybris was a lot farther to get out to than I initially thought. Also, I am reasonably sure that there's no fuel here at the circus. I mean, that's kind of the thing. Everybody who's like, but the cowardice, I'm like, whatever. If cowardice means survival, I'm happy to be a coward. Hello, do you guys have fuel? You don't. I knew they didn't. I knew that. I was optimistic but I knew they didn't. It's okay. Just gotta get back to New Winchester. Should be fine. Ah. Sheridan's Expanse. Further, New Winchester is where I believe our filmmaker friend needs to go. Broadly speaking. Her friends were looking for her there. An outbreak of the heart sickness. A mysterious outbreak of nostalgia is spreading through your crew. Frequently they stop work to stare away into the misty remembrance. They gather during the evenings to, medi to meditate on times gone by and debate the ways in which the past was superior to the present. The air is full of sighs. 39% chance, 39% chance. Man, I guess we're just going to sit with the afflicted because 39% chances are not good. And listen to their tales of times past. It won't help, but you might learn something. Well, we've gained some terror, which isn't great. Old secrets. If Port Avon is closer, you could pay less for fuel. Port Avon is not closer. It's not. Nostalgia has lifted the veils that normally hide their hearts. They speak of the things they left behind, the things they regret, and the things they wish they'd done differently. Sometimes, as they wander amidst the mists of the past, they speak of things they should not. Well, my terror is at 44, which is not optimal. Lights in the distance, a stoker begins to sing a ballad of the chimneys of New Winchester. Yep, we are. Oop. Almost headed in the wrong direction. But that's okay. We're on our way back to Winchester. We can hopefully get a little help for our many grievances there. I'm probably going to need to start taking more fuel, broadly speaking. Hold on. Darn it. Stop being so star maddened. I'm gonna be so mad if this tackety scout hits me. dead, man. The star-maddened explorer is defeated. Finally. Alright, we're very close to New Winchester, so it'll be fine <coughs> to go ahead and examine the logs. 
always defeated. The captain's door is covered in knots and crosses, so it transpires the rest of the cabin, his logs, and his body. In every game, the knots won. Your search turns up a few valuables and you return to the engine. Knots and crosses is X's and O's. For, for Americans who are confused. Knots and crosses is the game that we would call X's and O's. Or XXO. Scamp Snarrow, a gloomy disquiet settles over your engine. Morale is fragile. I know, guys! We're trying! We're so close to home! Nobody can perk up, even though New Winchester is right there. A distant clamor of engine yards. We're at 51 pair, to be fair. Ugh, man. That was a little rough. To the bazaar, please. You guys still just want munitions, huh? Well, could I buy some fuel? Okay. To the stories. Trading, I think, helps the terror. A note. We need to repair this locomotive. Fully repaired, please. We can leave here. Alright. An opportunity, a pernickety factor requests a meeting. Well, hold on. Before we do things, the smoggy, clanging, singing, stamping, thronging, frantic heart of the Reach, an ever expanding port of soot smudged glass and bright steel, spilling across a drifting, miswrapped archipelago. Its factories thunder, its engines shed rings, its engine sheds ring with hammers and hiss with steam. Locomotives chug into the sidings for repair or flare across the sky and await and away into the high wilderness. Well, let's drop off Madame Lumiere. She's eager to get back to work. She gives you a brisk handshake as she departs your locomotive. Better accommodation than I'm used to. Now I have a premiere to plan. You're invited, of course. It'll be next week, assuming I haven't keeled over. She brussels off into the smog of New Winchester. Your quartermaster complains that it's going to take weeks to get the spores out of her breath. Er, her birth. And I mean, you know, probably true. Sorry about that. I didn't like it either. Let's explore the city again. The pernickety factor... An opportunity. A pernickety factor requests a meeting. A neat calling card was waiting for you at the station. The paper was scented, the envelope ironed. There are probably spores in her breath, too. There's spores everywhere, I would think. Like, um, I don't have very strong hypochondriac tendencies. I'm not usually weird about germs. Traveling through a fungal-infested area where sometimes the funguses take over the trains themselves to attack me kind of makes me a little squeamish, kind of makes me want to go clean something. Well, let's meet this pernickety factor. Because this has the Hybris thing, yep, she wishes to go to Hybris. Of course she does. Ugh. The meeting takes several days to arrange. She rejects the round table as a venue and all of the cafes in the upper district, even that nice tea room under the bridges. Eventually, you agree upon the parlor at the company house which is open to visitors on a Sunday. The pernickety factor requests that you change table three times before she is satisfied. I'm looking for several disappeared colonists. I believe their destination was Hybris. I'd be much appreciative if you were to take me there. I mean, fine, but also we're not gonna be in any sort of hurry. And by request, like she just jumped aboard. I didn't have an option to refuse that. Right, those were all the same issues. Wolvesy Station, I don't think is any different. Okay. We're pretty close to the end of our time for today. We do have this opportunity out in Port Avon to go fulfill, so I think we'll do that and then we'll come back. The Spore Monster's probably a fun guy when you get to know it. I mean, I, I think that's a lie. <laughs> I want to believe you, I just don't. 
it's maybe because I saw the the wreck, right? It's maybe because I saw the Percival that makes me go, nope, the Spore guy is not a fun guy. The Spore guy will possess your train and your body to do Spore things, I guess. Alright, we've resupplied, we've gotten all the things. Let's get to Port Avon real fast, and then we'll call it a day. We discovered Hybris, a port that I hope to go to as little as possible. No thank you. Ugh. Oh, we need to drop off these port reports. I've got port reports to drop off. Oh, so close. I was so close to properly docking. Fine, fine. Visit Victory Hall. Deliver the port reports. Ranch. And I will trade these for Savage Secrets because I can trade Savage Secrets. And we will leave. Great. Port Avon. Port Avon, where they play cricket and they grow apples and it isn't infested by spore monsters that want to eat me. I'm just saying that we're probably not going to be making a lot of visits to Hybris. I'm just throwing out there now that that's maybe not what's going to happen. But we can go to Port Avon and play a little bit of cricket. Who doesn't like cricket? I don't. I don't know the rules of cricket. I don't know whether I would like it or not. My guess is probably no. I don't enjoy baseball, so I don't imagine I'd like cricket much better. They're just not for me. But I do like having reductions in terror, so... Maybe that. Old stones and forgotten ruins lie tumbled across the sky. A new smell behind the coal and oil, green, like the scent of apples. Nope, I went the wrong way. I went the wrong way! Alright, Port Avon. Port Avon that needs bronze wood. gonna sell off this bronze wood. Cricket season is nigh. Mr. Sharma of Fort Avon will pay five consignments of bronze wood to furnish the village team with bats, bi bales, bales, stumps, shin pads, and protective cups to minimize damage to delicate areas. Well, I've got that for you. Delighted by your arrival, the villagers invite you to tea to afternoon tea on the green. There's an alarming surefit of scones and you are pressed to take a rather lot of them on your way. Well, I'll take that. What is Thirsty Bombazine? Well, we haven't had a request for Thirsty Bombazine yet. Uh-oh. Oh, I see. It's because I've got too many of these things. So, let's go and sell that. We'll stop by the bazaar. I'll take all of this thirsty bombazine, since I'm sure it'll be needed somewhere, and we can keep it in the bank back at New Winchester. Like, we're just going to be turning around and going back the minute that I lower my terror enough. Um, a quiet day in Port Avon. Or I think it's Port Avon to get my port report. Excellent. I've already read it, so I won't keep reading it. The Village Green. Let's sit with the eel fishers. I don't think I've done this yet. They line the straight, stony edge of a block that juts into the sky. 
Their rods hang over the edge. Colonies of partner eels, smoky as sardines, breed on the underside of the port. Well, my terror fell, so we'll take that. As you watch, you watch as the fishers snag their wriggling prey, heave them onto the rock, and put an end to their thrashing with eel mallets. Ooh. The catches are infrequent, though, and aside from those occasional stru struggles, always swiftly ended by a meaty thwack, you can sit back, enjoy the starlight, and make conversation. I don't know that we've had the ability to visit the allotments. In fenced plots around Port Avon, grizzled horticulturalists tame the rampant vegetation of the Reach. Oh, we got an uncanny specimen for our trouble. An intriguing specimen. The contents of the allotments are unlike familiar vegetables, but it helps to look for the similarities. That bulbous squash is too lumpen, too spotty, too purple to be a marrow, but it is more like a marrow than it is like a cucumber. The little fruits clumped on the serpentine vines are certainly not cherries. Cherries are not hairy, but they are closer to cherries than they are to, say, kiwi fruit or otters. Call it a marrow, then. Call them cherries. It helps, somehow. The gardener, mistaking your cognitive reshuffling for hunger, offers you a handful of freshly dug, tapered, tiger-striped roots. Let's call them carrots. Right? Let's not think too hard about this and let's just call them carrots. Alright, I will watch this cricket match. We got a lot of the welcome for sending in the... for bringing in the bronze wood, so we'll spend some of that. And we played some cricket. Watch a cricket match. The crack of a willow on leather, a hesitant smattering of applause. How's that? The game could charitably be described as stately, but there is a moment of excitement when the batsman hits a six and the ball whizzes over the thatched roofs off the edge of the port and is lost forever in the starry deeps. The audience groans, play stops while someone goes to get another ball. We've dealt with our terror, though, and that's all I wanted. Let's get the heck out of here. And we're going to make our way back. Per the tradition of our streams, we try to always start and stop at what could be construed as home base, which for us is going to be New Winchester. So we'll head back there. We're full up on crew, and our hull is in good shape, provided I don't damage it severely between now and there. When we get there, we'll drop off that bombazine, resupply, and then we'll be ready to set out again tomorrow. Fortunately, New Winchester is close. That's why we made that extra trip over to Port Avon. To help fill out that opportunity just so that it got done. Let me see... About being prepared for our next bit. I like the idea that they gave me so many scones at Port Avon just there that it turned out to be three crates of supplies worth of scones. It's a lot of scones for a, for a tea party. I go a little up. This is one of those ways into New Winchester that I don't encounter very often, so hopefully I don't immediately turn us around in the wrong direction, as I have been known to do. Still, overall, pretty good day. Yeah, we had to deal with hybris, but look, we have a fancy new train. We can now harvest stuff from the sky instead of having to always buy it. This way? Overall, progress was made. So we'll stop in on New Winchester. Shuffle our supplies a bit, and then we'll head out. Okay, we don't need to hire on crew, and we don't actually need to repair the locomotive. We do need to hit the shops. Bank. I don't know what I'm going to use you for, Thirsty Bombazine, but I know where you can live now. And there's the munitions, at least one crate of it dealt with. Let's get more fuel. Since this engine does use a little more fuel, we might need to pick up a couple of extra barrels. Okay. And I think that's 
where we're going to go ahead and leave it. Give me just a second, and we will save. And we'll get to that outro screen. Ah, uh, hold on. For whatever reason, all of my overlays completely reset, and the whole thing is proven to be very annoying. And I can fix it, it just takes me an extra couple of seconds, and naturally I didn't think about this when I was starting. There we go. 